little less than a minute. We've got, it seems like we got a lot of Zoom. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started with our 11.25 a.m. press conference with the Georgia Bulldogs. A couple announcements. Uh, one, as a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants, please silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question during the press conference. If you're joining us, joining us on Zoom, please use the raise hand function for questions. We will address questions in the room first and get to Zoom if time allows. Also, recording the press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. Now, the Bulldogs are 20 and 16 and defeated Xavier and then went on the road to win at Wake Forest and at Ohio State. We are joined by Coach Mike White and student athletes Noah Thomason and Russell Chiwa. Now we ask that uh, after Coach's opening statement, we're gonna go to questions only for the players for a few minutes. And then when we're done with the players, even if you're on Zoom, you can come back and ask Coach so we can let the players go and get ready for practice. So Coach, welcome to Indianapolis. Welcome to Hinkle Fieldhouse. And if you'd make an opening statement about this experience and what you guys are looking forward to, we'd appreciate it very much. Thank you, JD. Uh, pleasure to be here, honor to be here represent the University of Georgia, um, historic event um, and uh, historic venue, obviously, a special place. Uh, really proud of the run that these guys have made, proud to be a part of it. Uh, no one more important, obviously, to what we're doing than these two guys who have finished strong, playing the best basketball of their careers. We're playing the best basketball of the season. Uh, five of the last seven, these last three have been really impressive with the way that we've played. So. Uh, trying to take advantage of every opportunity we can get, and we're appreciative of this opportunity. So happy to be here. Okay, first question for the players. Uh, both of you would answer. Talk about what it's been like to have this extra time with your team. You're one of only eight teams playing right now. What does that mean to you guys, and how much have you enjoyed being the only team here that's had to really go on the road and win some big games? Um, I think it has been good for us, you know, uh, for the foundation, you know, and for the year we uh, we had this year and for the commitment of all the players. So I think this was a great opportunity for us. Um, it's, it's been fun. I mean, you can just look at our culture. You know, there's no guys that opted out of the the the, the, the NIT. You know, we, we just wanted to play, have a good time. You know, we really love each other. I say it all the time. So um, an opportunity to keep playing with these guys, and especially for me and Russ, our last year has been a blessing. Edmund, I'm with the local host group here. Um, to follow up on that a little bit, you know, do you all talk about there are only eight teams on the men's side who are left playing at this time of year? Is that something that has been, you know, kind of discussed uh, among the team? I mean, we all be, I mean, we'd be watching um, the March minus basketball and stuff, so we know how many teams are playing now, you know, in NIT. So we obviously know, and that's a blessing, man, to um, play. That's my first time in five years of college. Uh, play for 10 months a year, so that's a blessing. Yeah, same with Russ. I mean, you know, our freshman year, um, postseason got canceled because of COVID. So now that in our fifth year, our last year, a chance to be playing in postseason, um, you know, is a blessing. So, go ahead. I'll go one more. Um, just in terms of, uh, have you all practiced yet, or you all are after this? So, um, you know, your thoughts on just Hinkle Fieldhouse as a historic venue and being able to have a, a kind of a unique postseason experience in a in a hundred year old uh, basketball arena with a lot of history. Uh, yeah, you know, and I haven't been familiar with the story of this, you know, of this uh, of this gym and stuff. But um, I'm gonna after this after today, I'm gonna be able to go and you know teach a little bit more about uh, the story of this great gymnastic and stuff. I mean, it's, it's Hinkle Fieldhouse is very historical. So I think that, uh, you know, 20 years from now when I have children that are playing, you know, I can look back and say, hey, I've played at a lot of different, you know, big time arenas being in SEC and now Hinkle Fieldhouse. So um, it's been a great ride and I can't wait to, you know, play a game there. 
Okay, let's go to Zoom. First, we'll have Jordan Hill, then Palmer Thoms, and then Mike Griffith. Yeah, guys. Uh, Noah, you hit on this a few minutes ago, the, the fact that this run has extended y'all's college careers. Just what's that experience like, knowing that you know y'all are still playing and uh, got a chance, like you said, to play in Hinkle Fieldhouse now? Um, you know, it's great. Uh, you know, I knew that after Florida, we had some. I, I, I felt like we had some time left. I didn't want to, you know, jinx our team, but you know, an opportunity to keep playing with, with my teammates, my brothers. This is a family. Um, I'm gonna remember this for the rest of my life. I'm, you know, glad I made this decision, and um, I wouldn't have picked any other way if I had to do it all over again. Yeah, I think um, this year has been my uh, best basketball um, college career year. So I'm just embracing it. You know, I give everything I have. You know. We um, we're gonna focus about this game today, and you know, go get the answer, get it, get it up. Yeah, this one's for Russell. Just I know you were battling a little bit of an illness last week. How are you feeling? And uh, you know, what what was it like to be watching from the sidelines more than you have been most of the season? Oh, it was good. You know, In, um, I know my, I mean, all my teammates. You know, they they're just being you know ready where their name we call. And it was good to see my teammates, especially Frank, you know, um, respond to, uh, to his time, respond to his name. So I'm really happy for him. And so it was being, it's been good all year. Okay, Mike, if you go ahead and everyone else on the call, if you'd identify yourself and your affiliation, we'd much, much appreciate it. We're going to take uh, Mike Griffith next, and then we're going to have one more in the room, and we'll get back to the Zoom right after that. Uh, yeah, for uh, for Noah. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Mike Griffith, uh, AJC's Dog Nation. Um, you mentioned that you guys have been watching March Madness, and um, you know you guys were beating Alabama by 13 points with 11 minutes left. You had a double digit lead on Tennessee and a lead eight team. How far is Georgia basketball from being one of those NCAA tournament teams? And has that gone through your mind watching Alabama, thinking to yourself, you know, and Tennessee, you know, yeah, you guys had that, those teams beat. Uh, yeah, we laugh about it all the time. Um, I, I think that even though this is our first year here, I think we've seen a, a change in Georgia basketball, and, and it's going to keep growing, you know, even when we're not here. I think that was the main goal of us coming here, help building something that's bigger than us. And, um, you know, I hope Coach White and the rest of the staff keeps, you know, making those strides to bring, ba bring Georgia back to where it needs to be and, and not just be a football school. We can be a, a every sport school. So that's the, that's the main goal. Obviously, I'm not surprised about, you know, all the ACC teams and stuff in, in the match minus run and stuff. And I'm just really, really uh, confident about Georgia basketball future. Okay, we'll go in the back of the room. Yeah, and IT Stu with uh, Bark and Crow. Um, so y'all, this is your first season at Georgia, but you are the older guys on the team. What's it been like seeing the younger guys develop this year? I know you guys run a really deep rotation, a lot of freshmen. And what advice have you been giving them of what to take away from this March run? Obviously, you know, it's been great. Um, we have a lot of good um, players, I mean, young players and stuff. And also for our kind of point of view, it's been a good thing to lead by example, you know. So show the young man how, um, um, how it looks like, uh, just respond the way uh, we've been coaching stuff, coaching hard. So I think it's a good thing for them to learn and grow. Uh, I, I think with me, you know, when I got here in June, you know, with Silas and Blue um, being guards just like myself, uh, the biggest thing is just showing them, you know, what it looks like to be a, to, to come to work every day, you know, do the little things, being on time, you know, getting works, at, uh, getting reps after after practice. Um, in this tournament, like I said, um, this is my first time playing the postseason as well, so I try not to say too much because I haven't been here, but leading by example is the main thing. You know, if Coach White says, you know, run through that wall, then, you know, I meet him on the other side. And, and that's, that's what it needs to be like for the whole team. So just trying to show that every single day. And, you know, I know that when I'm not going to be here and, and I'm done playing college basketball, George is going to have good hands with Blue and Silas. So they're growing every day, and I'm proud of them. Okay, we're going to finish up with the players. We've got three on Zoom. First, Anthony Dasher, Chip Towers, and then Zach Klein with the players. This is Anthony Dasher, UJSports.com. Uh, Noah, kind of follow up on, on uh, Blue and, and Silas just a little bit. I remember in, down in Birmingham for media days, you talked about taking both those guys under your wings, so to speak. Just elaborate a little bit more on the progress they made to where they were that day in Birmingham to right now, getting ready to play a game tomorrow. 
Um, just their confidence. Um, you know, every day. That, like I, I said it in Birmingham. I'm going to say it again. They're freshmen, but they, they carry themselves like juniors and seniors. So, um, you know, they're, they're big time players, and you know, they keep making big time plays for us. And um, you know, they helped us a lot throughout this whole season. So. Okay, uh, let's go to Chip Towers. Yeah, I guess, uh, hey, Noah, uh, I guess I'll uh, uh, ask this to you specifically. But, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, sort of sarcasm and stuff about the NIT. I saw somebody refer to it as the NCT, the Nobody Cares Tournament. Obviously, that's not the case with you guys. But there are like seven, eight teams or so that decline. So um, would you? what would you say to, to those teams right now? Or what, what's your feeling about that? Because uh, obviously you guys are taking this really serious. Well, I'm not going to say anything to those teams. Uh, all I can worry about is, is Georgia basketball. So when Coach White said there's a chance we can play again, um, you know, our focus got to, you know, whoever we play, let's get ready to get a win. So, um, and, and for me, that's another chance to keep playing college basketball, have more eyes on me from, you know, my career after here. So um, I was blessed that, you know, we, we were a team that were going to play in it. And, um, you know, I'm happy we played and we made many, many memories throughout this whole tournament. So now the, the goal is to try to win it. Okay, last question on Zoom for the players, WAGA. Hey, this is Kelly Bryce with Fox 5 in Atlanta. Uh, just wanted to ask you guys about how you've grown, even just in this short time of the NIT in the postseason, compared to obviously in the regular season. It seems like you guys have talked about playing your best basketball and all that kind of stuff. How have you grown as a team in just this short postseason? Okay, we'll start with Russell. Uh, I think it's a good thing, you know, um, just to see uh, our teammates, our brothers, you know, um, practice again uh, for a few more days, you know, know uh, that this is our last tournament and we're going to be away from each other, you know, we're never going to have the same thing back ever. So just think about this and be able to, you know, play again, practice again with our brothers and coaching staff is just a blessing. Like, um, we're not going to get this back, and we just give everything we have there. Yeah, like, like Russ said, um, you know, a chance to play with these guys again, play for Coach White again, it's, it's been a blessing. Uh, we, we won't be in this locker room again, so we might as well make the most out of it um, and try to win the NIT championship. So that's been the main goal, the main focus. Uh, we just take it one game at a time, though. So, you know, we got to get through Seton Hall tomorrow, and then uh, we'll figure out who we play for Thursday. So um, just trying to take it one day at a time. Okay, Zach, do you have a question for the players? It was for Coach. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the student-athletes. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. We'd ask those of you on Zoom to uh, continue to put your raised hand uh, so we can get to questions there for Coach. And, Zach, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Yes, Zach Klein with WSB Channel 2 in Atlanta. I know your focus uh, is on your upcoming match tomorrow, but big picture with the rules only allow certain practice times and hanging out with this guys. You know, how much does this opportunity to extend your season do you think will, uh, you know, assist in preparing for next year, the bond, the connection, the development of your team? You know, in, in, in today's landscape, it's, um, it's, it's uncertain um, based on, obviously, what happens this spring with, with our roster and every other roster in our league. Um, you know, and you could go – we could talk about that for a long time. I'm more focused on just – trying to help these guys, you know, a couple of these guys here, Noah um, and Russ, uh, uh, RJ Sunahara, guys who have ex exhausted their eligibility. We've got uh, four fourth-year uh, juniors that have options this, this spring, of course. We've got some freshmen. We've got some other third-year guys. Uh, this is about this current team more, more so than anything. I mean, um, you know, extra credit might be building for the future, and I appreciate these guys' comments about the future of Georgia basketball. And we'll get there, but we can talk about that next week. You know, I really would like to see this team just continue to play well. They're playing their best basketball of the season. I love being with these guys. I love working with these guys. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our development, especially over the last month, just trying to help these guys finish strong. Next question, Mark. Hey, Mark Weiser, Athens Banner Herald. Mike, Frank's extended minutes have seemed to pay off um, this last couple of games. Is it a balance now to work Russell back in? And can you update us on Jabri as well? Yeah, Jabri day to day. Um, Sonny, same way. Um, yeah, Frank's, Frank has, has played really well. And in some of our bigger wins this year, he's been on the court. Um, 
Everyday Frank is what we call him. He had a great practice yesterday. Uh, I would bet that he has a great practice today. That's who he is. He works. He's got great energy. And he really played well the other day is, is why uh, you know, we continued to, uh, to call his number and why he continued to earn the right to stay on the floor. So um, we'll evaluate it you know, in real time tomorrow night. But Frank will certainly uh, continue to get opportunity. Jordan. Yeah, Jordan Hill, Dogs 24-7. Mike, I asked uh, Noah and Russ, you know, about this tournament run, the fact it's kept their seasons, their college careers alive. Just what's that meant to you to see the run this team has made, especially those older guys continuing to get to play? It's been awesome, you know, and, and I don't, you know, it's, it's for the past month, I mean, this team has played, has been super, super com competitive. There's not a lot of teams in the country that, uh, regardless of the circumstances, could do what we've done, you know, there, there's obviously a, a few and, and there, a couple of those teams are still playing in the other tournament. Um, but the way that these guys have performed, we lost, we've won five of the last seven, we lost at Auburn. Uh, they have as, as good a home court advantage as anybody in the country, of course, played Florida to a one possession game in the last minute of the game and have won five against five really good teams. So um, let's keep playing, right? Let's keep playing. It's uh, it, the, it, it speaks to the character of our guys, um, also the basketball character, their relationships with one another. They want to continue to fight for one another. And, and, and you know, we're playing loose and, and we're having fun, um, but they also want to continue to, to prolong the season. And it's also very unique for us in addition, because this is an incredibly long season. When you consider the fact that this team started in June to prepare for a, a foreign tour in Italy, this has been a 10-month season for these guys which to me speaks further to the fact that Noah Thomason and Russ Chua like each other, you know, and want to continue to prolong this thing as, as long as possible, like playing at Georgia, like representing the G, uh, and like building, uh, but also going back to this current team, want to see where this thing can, can finish. So we're, we're honored to play. Uh, Seton Hall had, had a, a really strong argument to play in that other tournament, you know, and these other teams did as well. Uh, we won at Wake. It's hard, hard, hard to win at Wake Forest. We won at Ohio State. Really, really hard to win there. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. So this team's had a, had a heck of a month. Mike. Yeah, uh, Mike Griffith, uh, AJC's Dog Nation. Uh, Coach, I asked uh, Russell and Noah a few minutes ago about the NCAA tournament and watching uh, Alabama and Tennessee, uh, two teams that Georgia led by 11 points in the second half. Again, not, not, not to remind you the the tough finish, but, but what has this team done – uh, in the tournament uh, now, whereas you weren't able to close out those games against Elite Eight or, or Final Four teams that, that you were beating uh, for 30, 35 minutes? Yeah, you know, a, a couple that we all wish, or at least most of us, that, that you could have back at, at the end of every season, um, you know, but especially as you watch a couple of those teams make runs in, in the NCAA tournament. Uh, we talked about it all year, the fact that we're just a lot more competitive than we were a year ago, even though we only have a few more wins. We had chances to beat some high-level teams to complement the high-level wins that we've gotten. Um, I think down the stretch, we've uh, played with a little bit more confidence offensively, uh, found a little bit more rhythm, a little bit more role identification offensively, a little bit uh, mentally tougher and resilient uh, just to finish. I, I don't think that there's – just one area you can, um, you know, you can point at that's a major improvement from a couple of those losses. That said, another big factor in why we lost to a couple of those teams because they're really good. Because the SEC is really, really good, uh, and we just weren't quite good enough on that night to beat those teams. Uh, but we have been lately. Yeah, Mike Anthony Dasher, UJSports.com. You mentioned winning at Wake, winning at Ohio State. You also had some success you know, on the road during the regular season. I mean, that game at Florida State, I remember you saying after that game, this could mean something down the road. Yeah. So how did those experiences help you against Wake and Ohio State? Well, you know, I think it, it continues to uh, show our guys and, and hopefully infuse confidence in the fact that uh, we're very capable and uh, we've got a lot of momentum. These other teams got momentum too. Seton Hall's got momentum. Um, but we've uh, we played in some tough environments. We've played uh, neutral court environments in the past. We played on the on the road in the SEC, which is as difficult as any league in the country. Um, you know, and, and here we are with another great opportunity against a team who's really good, and they'll be very prepared. And they had a great year. Um, but we're 
you know, we're, we're going to have fun with it. You know, as Noah talked about and, and Russ confirmed, um, we're just we're seeing where this thing will, will take us, and we're trying to finish as strong as we can. Okay, we'll go to Zoom with WAGA, please. Hey, Coach. Kelly Price with Fox 5 in Atlanta. I actually have two questions, if I may. The first is um, you keep talking about how you guys are playing your best basketball. Why is that, do you think, at this point? And two, um, April 2nd is the – latest matches the latest rather the Bulldogs have ever played into the calendar year as a program and can you just speak to the significance of that yeah sure I, you know I talked about it a little bit earlier but the fact that we're still playing and we'll be playing on April 2nd uh, and potentially April 4th depending on obviously how we play um, when you complement that with the fact that, that we started in June it's, it's really incredible it's, it's as long a basketball season can possibly last right I mean it's it's a uh, it's going to be 10 months in a few days, uh, regardless of what happens this week. So again, I think it, it speaks to the character of our guys. The fact that down the stretch, although it, it maybe took eight and a half months, better late than never, you know, for it to come together a little bit in terms of um, that, that extra level of, again, mental toughness, resilience, what have you, just, just playing really well. You know, it's just, we've just kind of gotten incrementally better throughout the year, through ups, through downs, through uh, some winning streaks, some losing streaks. Um, but our guys have, have stayed the course. Great practice team. Best practice team I've ever coached. I've said it all year, and it's the same deal. I'm still saying it 10 months in. We'll have a really good practice today. Um, we've played a, a grueling schedule. We've played a lot of really good teams. We're building, and um, you know we're, we're anxious for another opportunity against another high-level team tomorrow. The first part of your question, did I dodge that or did I answer it, Mike? Okay. All right, we'll go to Palmer, Mark, then Chip, and Jordan to finish up with Coach, and then we have one in the room after we finish our Zoom questions. Palmer Toms, Dogs HQ. Coach, you mentioned the strength of the SEC. You obviously played a lot of those teams close, teams that made the tournament, um, and, and you hear those guys talk about the future of this program. Just how close do you feel like Georgia is to being on that kind of a level? Uh, I mean, we're really close. I, th I think anyone in this in this tournament's very close, especially the teams who are sitting here now in, in Indianapolis. I mean, uh, the way that we've played again in the past month, if we played that, that way all year, we would have been in the other tournament. I mean, it, again, I mean, um, if you look at what Ohio State has done at home and what Wake Forest has done at home and, and the team Xavier's been all season and, and with the SEC wins late uh, that we got, um, we're playing like an NCAA tournament team right now. Uh, unfortunately, you've got to do that all year to get in the other tournament, and, and you've got other factors that, uh, that are involved with, you know, with, with your quad one and quad two opportunities and how you take advantage and your computer numbers and all those things. But um, we have – we talk about growth in our program as much as anything. Growth on the court, growth off the court, playing your best basketball season, late in the season, being, becoming your best version, maxing out. It's all the same stuff, right, in, in, in each program. Um, phrases those type things in, in different ways. Those are usually the words we go to the most. Um, but if it comes down to growth, and that's what your that that that's what your your, your where your focus is, process driven as opposed to results driven, and getting better throughout the year. I'm proud of what this team's accomplished. Really proud um, because today we're a very good basketball team, and um, and who knows what that means for next year. We're going to finish as strong as we can, um, but. Hopefully, it gives us a little bit of, of momentum to be this version, you know, for longer stretches uh, during next season and the following season and, and moving forward. Mark. Mark Weiser, Athens, Panther Herald. Mike, what um, jumps out about Seton Hall from watching them on tape, and what, what kind of factors uh, will determine whether you win in terms of the matchup? Yeah. Um, they remind me of, of a couple teams in our league that, that really sit down with uh, discipline and, and, and physicality on the defensive end. Their positioning is, um, is high, high level. Um, Texas A&M comes to mind. Tennessee comes to mind. Uh, and we've got some really good defenses in our league, Mississippi State. Um, but tough, physical, uh, again, sound, uh, uh, committed to the defensive end really protect the paint at a high level. 
um, high percentage of steals, really high level uh, percentage level, excuse me, of, of block shots and altered shots. We're going to make you force you to make jump shots. We've got to make some jump shots, of, of course. Mixing defenses, their zone has been effective. Um, they've got good guard play. They've got good length. Um, they're they're very very good. Chip. Coach Chip Towers, Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, just wondering, uh, you know, a lot of the coaches and the teams that opted out of this thing said they did it because they weren't needed to work on their roster. And uh, I'm just wondering how you guys have been able to do that. Have you been able to build on your roster, make any transactions while you uh, multitask, getting ready for this next game and and getting ready for next year? Yeah, we're all uh, we're all multitasking. Um, we've been very active with recruiting throughout this, but we are throughout the year. Uh, obviously, when the portal opens, it, it really um, ramps up a little bit. Uh, we've had some Zooms, we've had some phone calls, but uh, you know, we, we would um, be remiss if, if we didn't continue to pour into this, this team and again, finish as strong as, as uh, we possibly can finish and, and really give to these guys. I mean, we owe Noah and, and Russ and, and RJ Sunahar, these guys came here with one year to play to try to do something special. Uh, and they found a way to, to um, get that NIT invite and, and continue to find ways to prolong this season. And so we're balancing it best we can. Um, and we'll continue to do that this week. OK, we'll go Adam, then Jordan, and finish up with the one more question in the room. Hey, Mike, it's Adam Zagoria. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Adam. Good. Um, what kind of challenges does Kadari present as a six-six point guard who can post up? And you know, you you see, uh, you know, a pro player when you see him. Do you think he's got uh, NBA potential? Oh, tough one there. Um, you know, I, I'm not I'm not scouting for that league, but you know, Seton Hall's got a few guys that, that are, are going to play basketball for a long time. I'll say that. Um, He's very, very talented. He's got great uh, tempo, pace to his game. Um, got a little burst that's deceptive, great hands, um, really good feel. He's a, um, there's a few guys like that in our league uh, that have the ability, but not many. You know, I, I should say a couple to a few that they could bring it up versus pressure and also can post up guys their own size. You know, so he's uh, a really versatile guy that complements the pieces around him. Uh, they're very hard to score on, but they're equally as difficult to defend. Jordan? Yeah, Jordan Hill, Dogs 24-7. Mike, obviously it would take 40 minutes uh, on Tuesday to get it done, but what would it mean for this program if you guys advanced to the championship game, something Georgia's never done before? Well, it was great to make the NIT. It was great to win the first one. I mean, it's been it's, – it's like every – uh, tournament process after every one, you say, boy, it's great to get here. You know, it's great to be in the NIT Final Four and play in, in Hinkle uh, and play against the team, of, again, uh, of the caliber of Seton Hall. But um, it would just continue to give these guys lifelong memories, uh, continue to uh, enhance our brand as, as a men's basketball program at Georgia, uh, and give our guys a chance to compete for a championship. But it's right now, we've done a really good job of staying in the moment. Um, Again, it, it, our focus today is, is having a great practice. You guys are sick of, of me saying that all year, I'm sure. If not, you should be, because I'm sick of uh, hearing myself say it. Um, but that, that's what it is. It's, it's having a great one today, having a great film session tonight, having a great first four-minute segment uh, tomorrow You know, against Seton Hall and trying to get some A shots against their stingy defense, hopefully converting, sprint back in transition, trying to get some stops, slow these guys down. Hopefully we're in a position mid-second half where we're within striking distance, you know, to, to capitalize, you know, to finish. Uh, and then we'll worry about, you know, we'll worry about post-game when we get there. Okay, last question, back of the room. Hi, Coach. NIT Stu with the Bark and Crow. Um, you've been coaching in the NIT for a while now. You had those great runs back at Louisiana Tech. How does that experience impact how you approach a tournament like this one? You know, the, the experiences of um, – of, of competing in the NIT as, as often as I've had the opportunity to, to do so um, probably has, 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 has taught me to relay to our guys what we just talked about in the last question, you know, just, just being in the moment, just enjoying it, being appreciative, playing with gratitude and joy, playing for one another, prolonging this thing. 
Uh, but it, it can't be about, because I, I think at times, going back to maybe some earlier questions, and, and this is something that our, our local people that do a really good job of covering us could probably talk about. I think at times in the middle of the year, when you're lacking the amount of quad one opportunities or quad, and you got a big, you got Tennessee coming in who's ranked this, and you find yourself a double digit lead, and all of a sudden, it, be, it can become very result driven. It can be, I thought at times a little bit during the year, we played a little bit tight offensively when we had chances to win those games and capitalize. Um, we played a little bit uh, too much uh, in terms of guys looking at the scoreboard and this shot's bigger than the last shot because I, this one's got to go in or we're not, and it can't be that way. It's just, it's, um, you know, unless you play like that all the time and, and not many teams have success doing that. This team's playing loose, they're, they're having fun. And, um, you know, if, if if we had played as loose as we're playing offensively, maybe in a couple of these other games at home when you're playing with that sizable lead, it could have been a little bit different. So um, we, we found what's working for this team, especially this time of year, and, uh, and we're playing well. Coach, we want to thank you and wish you the best of luck. Do you, do you tomorrow. have another 20 seconds? Go ahead. Can, can I say something you else? You can say something. Yeah. So my brother-in-law, he texted me. His name's Paul Chapel. He texted me and he thought it would enhance our chances for success tomorrow night if I just relayed the fact that, you know, he's fired up that we're in, we're in Hinkle. And um, he wants the world to know he was the 1998 Bulldog free throw shooting camp champ. So Paul Chapel, yep, free throw shooting champ at, at Butler basketball camp. Does that improve our chances, Colin, you think? Huh? We'll convert at the foul line at a higher level tomorrow? It's forever on video now. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Okay, our closing announcements for this. Hammond Communications will post a recording of this press conference at nit.hammondcg.com. Transcripts are provided by ASAP and will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us. In about nine minutes, we will have Seton Hall at 12.05.